Good morning, traders, and welcome to the live uh, special trading webinar here with uh, Jay Trader, Stocks Trader. Uh, can you hear me and see my screen? If you can just say yes in the questions or type a Y in there. Okay, excellent. All right, thank you guys. Okay, all right, so uh, uh, this is a special event. It's open to all. Um, this is very similar to the advanced education uh, that we offer with Bookmap Global Plus when you subscribe or purchase. Uh, and uh, uh, Joseph, um, uh, he's going to go through uh, a bit more than that, or quite a bit more than that uh, regular uh, trading webinar that he does on Wednesdays for us, uh, usually at 10 to 11 uh, or 10.15 to about 11.15 uh, every day, or I'm sorry, every Wednesday. Uh, today he's going to go for a couple hours. He wants to show his morning routine, his filtering for stocks, uh, and then uh, uh, how he trades the uh, pre-market, uh, how he trades the open, uh, and uh, some of his strategies, what he's looking at, how he how he um, uh, approaches these markets, um, and his um, entries, exits, trade management, and his outlook, his his psychology on this. Okay, so you're really going to get quite a bit from this. Uh, let's go through some disclosures. I have a bit of news, and, and then we'll hand it right over to Joseph. Okay, risk disclo or general disclosures. Know what you're getting into here. Okay, it is live trading, but it is in simulation. All right, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Okay, we've mentioned it many times. Our uh, a simulator is very accurate. It uses the liquidity that is in the order book. You will get slipped, so it is very accurate. However, it's different than uh, putting in uh, actual orders. All right. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for those for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, a little bit about Joseph. He's been trading for quite a while, uh, since 18 years old, uh, and um, uh, European equities and also uh, warrants or you know options, uh, trading very big size early on. Uh, and uh, now he's focusing uh, on uh, order flow and scalping, mainly US uh, equities uh, and options. Uh, and then he's the main trader in his small cap room. Uh, so uh, let me go over that. This is uh, contact information for Joseph. He offers mentorships, uh, mentoring, educational uh, services. If you're interested, you've got his website, his Twitter, YouTube, uh, as well as his email uh, and special offers from JTrader right here. Now I'm posting all of this into the chat so you don't you can click directly on the links. Uh, there it is uh, in the chat, so uh, you don't have to copy all of this down right now. All right, so uh, one thing I do need to go over before we hand it over to Joseph. Um, uh, well, tomorrow we have uh, 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 Scott Pulsini. Uh, he'll be trading live, uh, but uh, it's at 10 a.m., so if you guys are signed up for that. Now, this is the um, what I needed to show here was... was um, uh, uh, understanding the links here, um, it's kind of odd. It um, was something that happened with uh, GoToWebinar. All right, so let's just um, let me show you what I mean here. All right, so we'll go to the uh, GoToWebinar uh, here. Uh, now you signed up for this webinar here, right? Uh, for Wednesday, May 19th uh, at 8:30. If you click on the drop down, though, you'll see that you need to also register for the one for Thursday, May 20th at 10 a.m. And this is Scott Pulsini. All right. So, uh, yeah, it, I, I created the webinar and it created two separate ones. I don't know why. I guess because they're different times. Uh, but uh, just let you know about that. That's what you need to do if you want to attend tomorrow's. Uh, other than that, uh, let's turn it over to Joseph and let him take it away. All right. Good morning, traders. Thank you, Bruce, for the for the introduction. So let's put over here the screen on. Okay. So uh, first of all, 
uh, in the morning, I open Benzinga and Exo Trade. Uh, soon on Exo Trade, we will have it's an app that we are beta testing in the room, uh, created by uh, us. Um, we'll be having also the the scanners, so also the the morning gappers. But for now, let's use Benzinga. So I trade uh, small caps, and I've been trading small caps since uh, 2017. I trade big caps and equities from the early 2000 and uh, futures as well. Um, this morning for the small caps, we have only ADXS. And the parameters that I use over here, you can see my filters, okay? So I'm focusing on stock that have at least 20% of uh, gap. So gap is the difference between the previous day close and the actual price. 20% uh, in order to alert me that that a uh, stock is popping up okay, on my scanners. But if I don't get at least 30, 35%, I'm not going to consider the stock to trade. Volume is also important. So I always look for at least, you see over here, 300K uh, volume, because I don't want simply to trade liquid stocks. Uh, one of the worst things you can do in trading is uh, focusing on non-liquid products. You want always two main parameters for trading. One is liquidity, so volume. One is uh, volatility, so range, okay? The difference from the high and the low of the day. So as I said before, uh, I've been trading, uh, as I said, uh, as Bruce said before, you can read my bio on uh, YouTube. I've been trading um, cover warrants in Italian equities from early 2000, uh, 2000 sorry, 1999, 2000, 2001. And this for about uh, four or five years. Once uh, cover warrants became untradeable, because basically they, uh, they work like options, but these options were totally regulated by the market makers and the Italian SEC, so it's called Council, uh, didn't like uh, respect the volatility, the price. So often they, they shouldn't pay like, let's say five, 10, 15, 30%. They used to cut the volatility and they used to not even pay and, and send you out for a loss. So uh, the, the point traders is, uh, the point is traders that you need also to evolve in trading. For example, um, I've been uh, working a lot around 2004, 2005, uh, in order to move from Italian equities, which were, I would say, illiquid, not anymore tradable, the tech bubble of early 2000, like, you know, faded away, vanished. So I moved to uh, futures, trading mainly foots and DAX, and also US equities. And it worked pretty, pretty good. But the market gives you a lot of uh, anxiety, gives you a lot of stress. So as I explained, like um, in a podcast with the Delta Trader and also uh, with the B the Trader, uh, which are two great friends of mine, I, I wanted to explain traders how hard it is to trade for a living. At that time, I was only trading and that's it. When I was uh, around 33, 30, 32, 33, 34 years old, I took like uh, a two years, almost two years and a half break, only followed some swings because basically I was totally so stressed and you can define stress by panic attacks, uh, high heart rate beat, uh, high pressure. And uh, even if I was consistent in, uh, in stocks, uh, the amount of work, the size maybe that I was trading was too high for me at the time, also for other um, aspects I had in my life, I could not uh, do it anymore. So I had to like to uh, take care of my, really my health. Uh, my mom is a, is a trader over here and she, she was worried as well. And so I, I put myself in real estate, in uh, companies, and I always follow the market. Then around 2016, 2017, I came back to the markets and I was seeing everybody was making big money from these penny stocks, O2C stocks, okay? Um, I can understand that uh, everybody wants to make money right away, but it's not so simple. So I dig like uh, six months, eight months in every chat room, trading every trading system out there, 
with small size, basically blew up uh, some small accounts, uh, traded some paper, and that's very important. Don't trade right away live. Uh, learn how to trade first, be consistent. And I could see that besides, I would say, a couple of traders that had some very good way of trading, the rest was um, untradable. I mean that all these big traders were marketers, they were not like uh, profitable, and I really like this. Um, I consider, for example, two of my great influencers, one is Smash the Bit, he's a friend from Colorado, he runs a room, he trades big caps mostly. Another one, a Mother Rock, which was uh, which is a very good trader, and they inspired me a lot, especially especially on the reliability. So it took me like I would say eight, eight nine months to crack the code, and what I did was basically bringing back the system I had on big caps uh, and futures. So using my J lines, but I needed to adapt that to what small caps were doing because small caps each morning are gapping and I trade mostly gaps, I trade the news. Something that in big caps we don't have like 30, 40, 50, 200% gap or so. All the chart patterns I was trading, they were quite different. So after testing, starting like with small, uh, consider that I was doing a lot of volume and I still continue to trade in the meantime, futures and big caps, but I was trading something with a lot of volume passing to trade like three, four, 500 shares in small caps. It's like, it's like you're a pilot of Formula One each day, like Hamilton, the day after you drive a, a, a Mini Cooper down the street, okay? Basically, it's, it's almost the same. But you have to be humble. You have to put your head down, start trading, learning, uh, doing errors, and fixing your errors. So this is what I've been doing the last four years. And uh, once, um, uh, one time Smash told me because I was showing him all my trades and what I was doing, he told me like, doing such a great job, like start posting the room because uh, you have talent for this. So that's the reason why I put myself in a way I could help others. Um, and I enjoy doing this. I'm also trading, teaching my wife, my cousin. Uh, I'm actually proud because I brought my cousin in two months doing 600% on his account. He started with a small account, I gave him one of my small account. So the strategy really works and I can see from the results of the numbers. But it takes time. Don't expect traders that in one or two weeks, uh, you will do like millions or like in months. Some traders in the room and I can say some of the names like Kyle DC, like Bus, like even Chad K, Brian and others, um, made like five, six, 10, 20 times their account. This took a lot of work, took a lot of, uh, I would say, um, going over their errors and fixing them. Because not like you will be 90, 90% win rate. This kind of win rate seems crazy. And I have all my statements uh, was in the cover warrants for about almost three years in the Italian market because my system basically was trading in liquid, sorry, very liquid, um, uh, cover warrants based on stocks that were gapping up. So it was like each time I was putting all my money on top. But in this market, so trading uh, big caps, trading uh, small caps, trading futures, you have to work, I mean, with a system that will average, I would say between 60 and 75%, which is already high win rate, and look to trade the R's. So you cannot risk, for example, one buck to make one buck. You're gonna risk one buck to make two, three, four, five. So improving, back testing, uh, finding your niche in this market, that is what really will make you profitable. Okay, so uh, do you hear me good traders? Because some traders are, are telling me over here, they hear me a little bit uh, not good. Yeah, there was some good? noise, it's, it's gone now, but uh, it was like uh, some static on the microphone. Um, maybe, uh, I, don't, I don't know, it was, uh, uh, not plugged in or uh, close to your collar or something and um, rubbing okay, against let's something. see but it, it's fine. fine it's fine now oh, okay okay yeah. thank you bruce thank you very much all right so as you can see this morning traders we have no uh big caps sorry no small caps means i will focus on um big caps um the first thing i, I only have one small cap that i will follow and actually is over here arpo so 
I put a little bit more resolution for you guys today. And uh, let's see over here. This is ARPO. So ARPO is a day three. On Monday, trade over here, a lot of volume, 200 million plus, okay? 200 million plus is a huge amount of volume. Then day two, we traded over here more than 25 million. And you can see that we open, dipped into yesterday mid range and then push and making new eyes. Now we are day three. And I'm looking in the past, if we ever traded such a big volume like this, and actually no, we have a daily resistance over here and we have a daily resistance over here but I'm not going to base my trading only because this level up here, I have some resistance. This resistance is not, uh, is not with high volume. So we didn't have, we didn't trade at this level over here, high volume, neither over here, okay? So the plan this morning, you can see over here the chart, first day, second day, and now we are the third day. It's been holding this, uh, uh, pink magenta line, so this cloud over here, which is a five minute J lines, and this 200 exponential moving average multi time frame indicator, which, which is just like consider a 1000 minute. At the open on low volume, okay, so low volume for me will be a volume that is between 100 and maximum 200k. I'm gonna look for a short into the 195 two dollars. So I'm using bookmap in this case to look for a possible rejection of this level and to see in if I, if I have order flow over here to top the longs. If I will have that rejection, I will enter short, okay? Just one second, Bruce, I, tried to, I will try over here to fix uh, the audio if I can, just one second. It's fine now. Um, there's um, no static. The is saying audio is robotic, terrible. Do you confirm other traders? Seems fine to me. Okay, everybody's saying uh, fine. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, plan of ARPO, we'll write on the watch list over here. ARPO, low volume. Uh, 195 $2 dollars short, day three, risk 205, uh, first target 180, then 150. So I want 180 because these are 200 million, the five, and then I want the mid range, so 150 over here. This is ARPO, day three. So I just wanna check one second, how is the order flow at that two bucks? We need to adjust over here levels. So this is something that I didn't tell Bruce that I do it, but I adjust my uh, heat map according to the average of the blocks that I see passing. So what I mean by that, if over here on times of sales, okay, I see an average of 10,000 minimum order size. I'm not gonna put on heat map, like for example, ARP on the first day was like this, or SNDL, remember like one month and a half ago on that huge volume? I won't put over here 10,000. If we have the average of 10,000 shares blocks order, so the average size that you will see passing 10,000, I will put 20, 30, 40K. I wanna see the big resistance or the big support. Therefore, now in pre-market, we have not really a high volume, so I'm gonna put 5,000. But for example, yesterday, I had to switch this 5,000 to 10,000, actually 20,000 and 25,000, okay? So for now, let's keep it to 5,000. Hope the explanation over here, because this is basically what I've been doing. Uh, uh, Joseph, um, th that's that's fine. I mean, I, I've used that, I use that feature uh, quite a bit as well. Uh, if okay. you want the exact uh, contract size, but you can also use the sliders. I just wanted to mention that. Um, the mm -hmm. sliders make it more of referential. So if there's a block that comes in that's 30,000, then it will that will be red liquidity, the highest, uh, you know, in the in the uh, uh, graphical uh, heat map. Um, mm -hmm. And then something lesser will be, you know, a, a lesser uh, a color. So uh, exactly. in, in, anyway, uh, yeah, never, that was all. 
also traders focus always on the deep red levels okay don't care if you have these orange levels over here personally i focus only the main levels all right that's for me important then this morning we have to focus as i said on uh stock big cap market okay so let's put over here for example nayo and first we have to take a look at es so you know that i don't really follow spy i prefer to follow es so futures i always feel they anticipate a little bit stocks that i will trade they can be um apple nvidia tesla facebook okay so i started a position on uh, on uh, um and nio uh this in one of my accounts so not simulated like over here on bookmap i'm going to post this in uh, our room uh boiler room and basically why i'm looking too short uh today in io so first of all what's doing over here yes we had a push into this level over here yes so this is a 515 ema and we are rejecting and unwinding so we have first one two three days that we top at 4180 so this is a beautiful pattern because it means we have a very good big resistance over there then we have a trend break and now we we had two big red bars with the possible target to the slow 40 and 30 40 and 20. so if i have es being so heavy this morning i will look to short apple facebook tesla nayo for an unwind or take puts okay that's the plan of today so let's look at yes what's been doing over here so this is the previous day low 41 21. we are down trending the downtrend is formed when you have a set of lower highs and lower lows okay there are some indicators if somebody comes from the futures that they use a lot called zigzag and they basically are like this okay one or like you know the, the fractals if you know what fractals are so they get but they will repaint okay otherwise it would be too nice you could even short or long only these dips and tops but they repaint so this is a, a downtrend and downtrend for me is when you have distance from this uh, let's say uh, pink line to this yellow line to this purple line to this yellow line up here so what does it mean we are trending when the one is below the three below the five below the 200 EMA and when we are uh, and when they are distant from each other we are lateral for example when we are like here you see they're all together the the one the three the five they're all together they're all like smashed we're not trending over here so i cannot trade something like this surely will be areas of consolidation and i will wait for the further breakdown so at this point i'm looking yes this morning has been rejecting j lines so level over here up trend line fail trend line fail trend line fail trend line fail okay so we have been the market is heavy and we can fade to that support 40 and 30 okay if we will have that continuation at the open i'm going to focus on as i said first on nio so look over here nio uh you can see my my start of the trade so basically i have a small position now uh in on one fourth uh 33 and uh, 45 average why i'm i'm uh, starting my position early because the market is really weak and i've seen a, a good rejection on this uh on this uh setup so this is the daily and you can see that when we are above the j lines so these are the j lines daily when i say j lines you can see over here 72 89 exponential moving average okay i back tested almost every indicator out there i believe 
uh, these around 2003, 2004, when I switched from cover warrants to um, equities and, um, and futures. And I find that uh, uh, expansion number Fibonacci, um, I would say, reoccur in time. Often I will see faders or grinders, so bear uh, direction and bull direction that will have dips or rejection from the JLs. I uh, use the one minute chart together with a five minute chart. Okay, so there are some traders who will follow the one minute, so I have to use a 7289. There are traders who will follow the five minutes, so I suggest them to use the 14 and 17, which is uh, 14 and 17 per five, 7289. The same thing happens on the daily, and you can see that the price over here starts on the dip into the J-lines, curl, push, push, push. At this level over here, what happens, traders? What happened? We have a fail. You see over here the fail on this bar, and then you have immediately a rejection, a rejection, a rejection. So you don't really need to be a genius, okay, to do this. You look for your pattern, short. You look for your pattern, short. You look for your pattern, short. And you take down wide. Uh, this is a bear flag. This is a bear flag. This is a bear flag. Okay, so in a downtrend, when we have a pullback to the J lines, these are bear flags. All right. Now, if I look into a one minute chart, you can see that we are below the previous day low so we're breaking this 33 30 and i like this pattern also because we broke this uptrend line so this was a nice rejection and then when i saw this extension over here you see that volume how low it is i grabbed on this uptrend line over here my short looking for the break of the j lines and now it's fading okay is it clear traders Good. So, as I said, I posted my starter in a boiler room of uh, small cap room Discord. Okay. And we're fading over here. Average 33.45. So, I'm looking for an unwind over here. At the open, I'm looking for this setup called over under or JLN rejection. I will show you what basically we have to look for. So let me see if I can draw over here. Okay, maybe let's see. So this is the J lines. So I'm looking for this push and fail. And I want to short over here. Or if we won't have this kind of setup and we will have, let's say this is the open. Uh, let's say this is the, um, is the J line. Okay, and this is the open. Price goes down, goes down, goes down, and finds this J line. This level I will short. This will be a stop. So J line rejection. When we have a bear uh, market, so when we have used downtrend, like for example Tesla uh, two weeks ago, I'm looking for these setups over here, J line rejection. Okay. So I'm looking to trade this. If you are looking to trade um, the stock, always have a stop loss. Always, okay, always. Now, let's look. So this is the plan on NIO. Uh, it's already up into the watch list. Let me, I will repost it. Okay, it's already over here. So I will repost the plan. So for the, who's coming late. And we will do over under always on confirm weakness of market and J line rejection. Really no need to trade puts over here. And the stock is not really that expensive. All right, now we have to look for a second one. So what else moves very good when ES is fading? So try to add odds to your trading, okay? That means edge. Apple, Tesla, are two of the best ones, okay? If I have to choose, I would say choose Apple if you're trading options, if you have a smaller account, because options will be cheaper. Choose Tesla if you want to have the range, okay? And I love a Tesla. 
I focus on Tesla every single day since years. Um, I used to trade Tesla uh, mostly with the options. Uh, now I like to trade Tesla because, for example, Monday and let's say even a part of Tuesday, I really don't like option for the premium, the spread. I, I look to trade option between Wednesday and Friday mostly. But I like to trade uh, the stock itself um, and just keep it simple. So this morning, you see over here, we're already starting to fade that low, the pre-market low. Again, over here on Tesla, we'll look for JLM rejection or over-under. Okay, so I'm going to update the watch list in the boiler room. So Tesla, same plan, over-under, and JLM rejection. In this case, we have to see in 30 minutes what will be the price. But I would believe 445 puts weekly will be a good one. Let's try and look for supports, okay? So this is my, again, my daily. What can you see over here, traders? Dip into the daily J-lines. Rejection, J-lines, rejection, J-lines, curl about J-lines. And over here, what happened? This. So a couple of days ago, I said, start looking for a possible uh, fade on Tesla for this reason. So I took my trend line. You see how simple it is. This is a trend line, okay? If I have to describe this pattern, this is a channel. And once we get over here, you see a fail, a rejection, and a fail over here. Now, if I'm wrong, you will tell me, Jay, you're totally wrong. You don't understand the shit. And go away. But isn't this the same kind of pattern? So this is now hourly. One, two, three. And then you have a breakdown, a pop into that J lines, and then fill. It's the same exact thing. Okay. And this morning we are having this rejection over here. So on Tesla, I'm looking for the breakdown to work. Uh, this is the hour. Let me put back the, the daily. And I'm looking for the price to reach over here 540, and ideally even break it. But we know that the 545, 540, 543, this area over here is where basically we had uh, we had an exhaustion in the previous move so we can have a bounce okay is it clear traders any questions on this not yet okay okay so tesla second one and let's start to put everything in order over here okay let's try always to be Precise, keep your desk clean. Uh, I like really precision in, uh, in work. I'm a mess in everything else. If you see my car, uh, uh, Bruce is, uh, is just like, uh, seems like a junkyard. But basically, when I'm uh, talking about work, you have to be super precise. Uh, the more uh, precision order you have in your trading, the more everything around you is fixed, perfect. Uh, the better your, I would say, confidence, your mind, you keep your mind clear, you don't have distractions, okay? So now it's fading pretty good. We're up 45 cents over here. And um, just one second, just one second, just one second, just one second. Over here, this is the room before I said this is 809. Have a started 50s on Nayo, okay? And the plan of Nayo, I explained it, and I said I was looking for that fader, um, risking, risking for the 34 and tens, okay? So plan for us today is to look for that fader. Now, let's put also. Tesla, let's zoom in over here. Then when something pops up, we'll bring on the, the main screen. And we're gonna put Apple. We have Apple and Facebook. Okay. So do you prefer Apple traders or Facebook? I can put both because they're both setting up the same. Looks like Apple's clearly winning the Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I knew it. <laughs> all right so this is apple uh what i trace over here are the levels 
okay? Don't be afraid, trace your levels. Uh, so these levels will be important because if we have a fader, uh, these will be the possible level of support. And also don't be afraid to trace your trend lines, okay? So we have this uh, re um, relative, low relative over here. We broke over here. So we need to put even another, okay, another level. And we're basically having the same thing, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? We faded the J-lines and rejected the J-lines, simply just like now in Tesla. So now we're looking for a possible unwind, at least this 122 area. When you trace a level of support, it's not that, oh, I'm waiting for that 122 and 41. No, it can be all this area. It can be even 122 and 60s, okay? The order flow will help you to see this. Getting to the one minute, you have a downtrend. You have a, a trend because, as I said before, the one minute day lines is far from the three, far from the five, far from the 1000 MA. And now we're consol consolidating over here. So at the open, on confirmed weakness of SPY or ES. I'm looking for an over under or JLA rejection. Remember always, and remember, this is the pre market low. Supposedly, it will be this level at the open, okay? If the market starts bouncing, don't be stubborn with the plan. So, this is my A plus setup, okay? For this setup over here. If this doesn't work, so if we will have A, tail to the J-lines, but this pre-market over here will hold or exhaust the move, don't hold it and pray. This is the level of stop, just at the J-lines. Or even if you have over here, uh, let's say a big volume, like an exhaustion, and really you see no more sellers, but your times in sales is all green, I'm cutting in the money or break even. You need to be waiting for that trade. Uh, why I say this? Because, for example, I always have double uh, plan, one for long, one for short. I'm not one of those traders that wants to be like uh, an Ostradamus over here. I really don't give a damn. I, I care only to make my part of the move and trade that part of the move. Yesterday, we had bind. So I'm going to show what happened on bind. Bookman was simply wrapped in perfect over here. And we had... I was looking, sorry, uh, two days ago, two days ago, over here. I was looking for a long in the morning, and this instead didn't set up for a long, but gave us a fail follow through. So when I saw a rejection over here, we were looking to short this. And this is, for example, uh, the trade I posted, like, uh, I think yesterday, uh, that my wife, let's see if I can put it up. I think she was trading this on the airplane or something like that. So this is, for example, Bones. You see how he traded that fail follow through, uh, looking for that unwind. And this is uh, uh, my wife looking for that trend break and shorting over here. Okay. So the point is you have always to consider if the plan doesn't work, what are you going to do? Use stop loss. Don't be stubborn. Honor your stop loss, okay? Because some traders, what they will do, they will cancel their stop loss because they cannot face the fact they're losing, okay? Uh, so over here, we have a fader. And if we have the market acting so weak, I will look for this kind of setup, looking to trade short the J-lines. If the market will bounce, I will simply look instead to uh, reversal, for a reversal, and trade long. Okay, so over here, sorry, sorry traders, uh, the microphone fell over here. Okay. I'm trying to fix it. Okay, so over here, I'm looking for Apple today as our last one, okay? We have, yes, always guide, also for the future traders. 
We have NIO, which is acting pretty good. We have Tesla over here. We have Apple. As I said, ARPO is for uh, only a push on low volume to 195.2. And NIO is the other one we are looking at. Okay. So these are the main ones. If we will have traders, if we will have any kind of um, gappers, please always alert. Remember, okay. So the first, I'm putting the first take profit over here. In the room, Nayo. I don't see any kind of uh, to answer some traders over here. Any kind of A plus setup uh, to trade um, uh, small caps. We had a very small trade this morning on uh, FL FLGD. Sorry. FLGC, FLGC, but for now, nothing else. All right, so this is fading over here. So let's look for the unwind. Tesla is uh, very heavy for now. So I'm going to keep over here Tesla. I'm going to put... I'm going to put Tesla down here and Nye up here. So I will try to have two book maps. And I will tell you how I uh, fix my book maps. Okay. So this one. You can see the wind on trend break. And over here, you can see the unwind. Support. We have traded that support. Remember, this is the previous low. So on Tesla. We have to put, sorry, on Tesla, we have to put traders 1999. At least we have to put, this is what I put, okay? I put 199 minimum size bid, size uh, order, sorry. So I want to see the big blocks passing. I don't care if a trader gets in with 200 shares, 100, 500. I want to see at least 2,000. And then over here, my heat map, I'm going to put, not really 1,000, we'll check after. Probably I will raise it in case we have high liquidity. Uh, on NIO, instead, it's totally different scenario. I've put 999. And over here on heat map, I put 5,000. This I can also take off. We'll keep it over here. Very, very simple, right? Very, very simple. The more you complicate things, the worse it is. So if you got the short in a uh, in small cap room with me at 3250s, uh, I need to look what's the next possible support. So we have this important level of support over here. Okay. So 3260. And then we have this support over here, previous relative low, and this previous support, previous relative, relative low. Okay. So right now, if we start bouncing from the 60s over here, is another place where I will cover more of my position. Okay, is it clear, traders? Okay, so the reason over here to take partial and get out partial. There's a question on the under over, if you could uh, maybe um, describe that or elaborate on that a bit more. Yes, I think the best is to show an example. So, <clears throat> okay. This is uh, from, uh, yeah, this is from a member. So I'm gonna use 
Um, hope you see traders with this white. Okay, let's use over here the colors. Let's see, pen color, we'll put blue. Okay. And let's use join tools. Okay. All right, so the red and the green are the datas, all right? If I'm looking for a fader, all right? So we're looking for the trade to uh, be a short. And we have this pre market resistance, okay? So you have a very tight, small pre market. At least you want to see this kind of consolidation, all right? And you see the price over here. This is on BA, 239, 239 and 60. So we have 60 cents of range. The smaller the range, the better it is. So when we open, and pop into the day lines over here and reject, and also we have that pre-market resistance, this level, just below the open level, is a very good level to short. So if you take, for example, a book map chart, you will see this. Can be this, can be this, can be this, okay? So can be big range, small range, bigger. And then you look for the unwind. But if we have that pre-market support that holds over here and pop, you need to cut the trade. Okay, is it clear, uh, traders? Okay, so now let's prepare. MC is the other one I'm looking today. So bounce over here, Tesla. You see that. Tesla is so reactive over here. Trade even pretty good volume, almost 50K on this pop. So on Monday, um, I posted this in the room. The 17 was on Monday, yes. Uh, BTC fail of J lines, and again, J lines, right? If you arrive early, I explained all my story, where I found the J lines and everything. And I said, if we fail the 41, we're going to go 31. So check it. The area of support, as I said before, is not a single, okay, a single number. It's not, oh, 41, if it breaks 40 and 9, 98, we're done. This is going to be, no, it's a level. So you always have to see that level that we break or we consolidate and we break down more or that we uh, reject the level of support, previous, sorry, of um, support then became resistance, okay? But over here, we can really see the 30, 32 area, 33 area. So let's see if we'll have more in wine today. This I can close, we don't need any more. And this for now, I don't need any more. All right, so we have uh, 10 minutes to open. Let's check if we have other gappers. How often are you um, trading the uh, pre-market and um, post-market? Post-market, I would say almost never, because that would be already my 10th and 30 a.m. And generally, I wake up at a p.m. And generally, I wake up at uh, 4 to 5.30 a.m. Um, Pre-market, almost always, if I have uh, setups. Even this morning, we traded. So I'm here generally from, uh, I would say, 5.30 a.m. East. So, and uh, uh, I guess the sizing um, must be of course be different yes yes i always say in pre-market use one third one fourth of your normal average size unless really a uh, 
perfect structure chart pattern. And I always trade everything from my playbook. So all the trades that I take are in this, I would say like manual course that I made and that I back test and that I see that they're working over time. As I told you before, uh, for example, on the small caps, I started doing this in 2016, 2017, exploring everything out there. And uh, I found out that there are some chart patterns that are reoccurring. And then with price section, I would say reading and order flow reading, uh, I can have a pretty high win rate. But generally, uh, Bruce, uh, on big caps, I almost never take pre-market trades unless really like today, uh, some very good range, uh, ES being so, um, I would say weak, uh, heavy. So let's see over here now, JLA rejection. Let's see also now I prepare also traders. I will prepare over here, Nayo. I will prepare over here. Also, Tesla. A, a question on the um, uh, routine for filtering uh, for large caps. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you're not looking? Are you're looking at I guess news, but you're not looking at the fundamentals of the uh, of the business. You already know that these are large caps, and uh, yeah, I'm not looking at the fundamentals. Uh, I'm looking for uh, small gaps, uh, trend stocks, uh, main ones, which are for me, NVIDIA, BA, BABA, Bind, uh, ZM, um, Tesla, Netflix, Amazon, Google, and uh, Twitter, Snap. Um, and also I'm looking for uh, small consolidation breakouts or breakdowns. Or as we saw before on uh, Tesla and Nile, those hourly or daily bounce or rejections. So I scan them manually. I'm not this uh, great technician. I use TOS only for, for charting over here uh, or other platforms, but I'm not really a great technician. So I don't run really so fancy scanners. I mean, for example, my friend Ripster47 is very good in this stuff. I'm more like, you know, um, more simple in the way I scan, even because I like to trade the same I would say 10, 15 big caps almost every day. Okay, but the, I mean, the process is, is vastly different for your small caps because you need to know. Absolutely, for... very, very different. I think we would need Bruce like a 30, 30 45 minutes to <laughs> go over that. Another time. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. All right, so let's see if something else came up on the scanners, but I don't really see that much, no. So I want, I want to focus on ES and see what is going to do it open. Are we going to fade? Is going to be weak or are we going to reverse? If that is going to be weak, I'm looking for possible ads on NIO and to load into the three, the 3310, 33, Four minutes, not even four minutes to go. Let's see also Tesla over here. So 
So for now, we don't have any kind of big level of resistance above on NIO. We have VWAP and J lines between 33.10 and 33.20. Oh, Joseph, uh, I'm just a little curious. Uh, I, I guess we'll find out in a few minutes, but um, mm -hmm. do you, I mean, just, do you just, you're still looking in playing your strategy regardless of the volatility? I mean, it's kind of hard to get in uh, and out so quickly sometimes uh, right at yeah. the open. I, I suggest to have out keys. Absolutely, Bruce. Um, a lot of traders in the in the room, I mean, there is, for example, a little beast, my friend from Scotland called Pedro. Uh, by the time you say hi, he enter and exit like two times. So you have to be super quick at open. It's only for, I would say, uh, speed traders. <laughs> if you are like slower, like you want to think a little bit more, then I would suggest you only trade after 9.35, 9.40. Yep, the open perfect. is not really the problem to get a fail. The open is, if reverses instantly, you have to be able to get that exit. That's my alert on the spikes. So we have two minutes to go. One minute and 10 seconds, traders. I suggest always to be calm and open. Don't have FOMO, don't anticipate. Respect rules, respect the setups. Um, don't have FOMO, okay? If you miss one trade, there'll always be another one. It's about you know, like 20, 20 years I'm telling this myself. Okay, they're looking to put some resistance at 33. So I'm ready really on NIO. More than Tesla over here to open. So let's see if we can get that. NIO seems weak over here. 20 seconds to go. And remember to re-listen this uh, webinar because I explain all my story and my process at the beginning of the uh, recording. Okay, open. Okay, I'm watching over here the volume on Tesla. You saw 5150. This dot over here. A big dump over here on ES. The point that we have over here a spike down means we had buyers at the 66, 70s. So when we have buyers careful because it can spike back up, I'm not going to trade far from the J line. So I'm waiting that. So yes, it's coming down. Some small pop over here on. NIO, which is not following. So these are possible profit takers. Push Tesla over here to that J line. So they held a dip on the daily support. So ES is bouncing. I'm not looking to trade short yet. Yes, rejection over here. Big soak 
on this 33, you can see traders. This is a big soak. They traded half a million volume over here, 33. So very key level. Now, now it's bouncing. Not a long for me. It's still pushing J lines over here. Strong volume, 900K per minute on NIO. No trade yet. Some resistance 24, they're flashing red. Let's see if we can fill the VWAP. Yes, it's bouncing, so showing some strength from the dip. You can see over here the bounce from that previous support, okay? So this is bullish at the moment. They're trying to find support to that 18 on the VWAP. Still strong, yes. So I'm not going counter trend and shorting NIO, having yes over here, let's see. Below VWAP. There's some failure over here. I'm still holding position, start at 33 and 45, short on um, NIO but ready to cover everything 33 and 25 now. Open level over here. Let's see if we can break 3290. 3290 is the level of the, it's just below the level of open. Watching that 3290, this support over here still didn't add to my position i will show if i do my position first on the live account and the second one over here on the on nile with bookmap you see they're bouncing over here so they found that support and you can see they've been soaking the 3290. not gonna be early and jump in Again, buyers at that 85 on that support, you can see traders. Now it's only about a fight between buyers and sellers. Yes, it's popping. Yes, it's above J lines. Seems now you're weak. Seems they're gonna drop and they're gonna clear that liquidity between 85 and 90. When I say liquidity, it means all these orders that are stacked over here, okay? Seeing they're gonna break them down, and I'm looking to short this to add to my position. Short it over here. Get in at A7. Risking 33 and zero, uh, 33 and 10, sorry. So they're holding that dip. I'm ready to cut and my position will reverse. Now my average is 33 and 22. So I wanna cut in the money. So 90, you can see that they're trying to hold this level. Also start looking for ES. If we're gonna have a, a fail over here of the J lines and also start looking at Tesla for a possible trend break. Okay, careful because NIO is at 33.10 over here. Okay, out everything covering in the money. At 33.15 and 33.16. So over here, a little bit of um, over under. So we're looking for the breakdown. They held over here, 
reason to cover the J lines and now holding posting my chart on uh, uh, boiler room small cap room so I was looking for more fail follow through didn't come nothing let's wait for another one yes instead is fading Tesla exhaustion to the upside over here Watching Tesla very closely for a fill 552. So let's see Tesla over here. Toss is a little bit behind traders, careful. Took some Tesla over here short. Look for a breakdown of 550. Five forty nine. Five fifty is holding. So again, looking for more and wine because ES is weak. Okay. ES is weak. Okay, let's see over here if this will go. They're holding, getting out, break even maximum 552. So posting in boiler room, Tesla trade. So yes, it's fading. Still waiting for that unwind, but we have a huge amount of buyers on this main support daily. Same huge amount of buyers on nine. So wait a little bit. We have Apple instead bouncing over here. You can put Facebook. Yeah, we have some lag on toss, careful. And over here we can put AMC. So let's see if we, we're going to have more unwind on Tesla. And if we can re-enter again into the trade. It's all about patience, waiting the perfect setup. Okay, let's see. Tesla 552, so still rejecting this area over here. Almost short, took a short over here on Tesla, 551 and stopping at 553 uh es is going down i'm gonna do like this the reason why i enter over here is for the rejection that curl down es is weak and curly down over here also for this um, uh, order flow pattern and i'm trading just uh over under j line rejection so i'm looking again for this trade to work average 551 I'm risking break even again. So I want to see right away fill of that 550, which is not fading. Okay, 549. I'm gonna cover partial over here at the 25. Okay, cover something at 549. Just to take some profit.
So we are looking over here for this fill, okay? The short, and again, short cover, I wanna see unwind over here. And the risk has to be for now 551. Yes, it's fading good. 551 again. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of wiggle room. We have a big support traders at that 547, 548 daily. Out. So basically, what I had my win give back on this pop over here again, holding this 550. So no direction for now on uh, Tesla, basically scratch over here and waiting for a possible A plus setup still. On small caps, we have nothing. So good exit on Tesla. That's the risk management. I was looking at this high, okay? So on the break of the side, the 90 May, reason to get out because this was making high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, and break of that uh, relative high. And this is how you prevent, really how you prevent uh, stops, big stops, okay? So we close it for a scratch and it basically went five bucks above. But you see that we're bouncing from the daily. This was our daily chart. We have that main support over here. Remember this great zone we cover in pre-market. And now we're just having a pattern with this bouncing and popping. Let's see also, yes. Practically, I think Tesla is bringing up ES over here. Uh, Apple and Facebook following as well. Let's see APRO, ARPO, sorry. ARPO, low volume over here, looking to short into that too. Yeah, definitely over here. This is a short ARPO. So we're going to do like this. Short ask. I'm going to trade also with this one. Till the volume is low, I'm going to short ARPO. Need the volume always to be low to, in order to short, okay? Never want high volume. So I'm risking 201. I'm going to scale into the 198 on ARPO. Waiting in the meantime on the, on the big caps. You see the big resistance over here. Uh, in pre-market, we made the plan to short this around 195 too. So reason to start 195. I like the setup over here. Let's add another, if we're gonna take, for example, I'm taking this also live on my account using three brokers. If I'm gonna load over here, this is something like you can put uh, a good amount of money if you have a low risk, okay? Until the volume is low. So remember what I said, day three, I'm shorting into resistance of two. We have, the fade over here. For me, this is an A plus setup on day three. Uh, need only to remain with low volume. 
So I'm scaling in into this $2 level, risking maximum this uh, red line over here. Is it clear, traders? Okay. And I'm looking for the fail of that momentum and a trend break over here. Remember that we need to fix this 10,000. 10,000, okay. So you see that we have less colors. We can put even, let's see, 15 today, or maybe even 20. This for me is load a boat, this will be a short. Just, I want to load up here, okay? Uh, Sven is asking how you use Bookmap to confirm your setups. Oh, yes. So, uh, day three, I'm looking for pass with low volume. Below 150K, 200 volume for this stock is a low volume. Uh, take that for granted. There's a lot of more of a back, uh, background uh, behind that. When I'm shorting, I want to see basically that we have no more buyers. And over here, basically, I don't see that huge amount of uh, majority of buyers versus the sellers, okay? I want to see that we have these big red zones that top my trade. I always say it's like if you try to uh, shoot for three at basketball and you have like uh, Dikembe Mutombo or LeBron James that will be blocking your shots. Unless you're seven foot, if you're like me, like six, <laughs> you will get like blocked each time. The same thing as trying to buy a stock into that resistance where you have a huge amount of sellers and you have no buyers. So that comes now very handy to filter this. You want to see the big block passing, okay? So I traded this also on two different brokers besides that for, you know, for bookmap we have to do for the disclosure, this thing in paper. But for example, here, Started too short. Also, another broker loaded. Um, this is uh, smaller, and I'm looking for an NY. My target over here is 180. I'm not gonna cover till 180, or I'm gonna stop at 202. So I'm gonna have three R at least, or I'm not going to take the trade. Okay. Is it clear, traders? Mosey popping. Remember Mosey, one of our favorite, because Facebook now. Uh, Apple, Tesla are not giving my setup. So waiting over here, we have to put Tesla because you know it's my favorite. So let's see. We always have to have a stop loss. Okay, so 202 for me. Uh, let's look, Mosey. If I remember correctly, we traded Mosey a few uh, days ago on this pop exactly. So they're curling back up. So this day trade a huge amount of volume, 59 million. We have a 4 million float. This morning I see no news. So this is that can bounce to our newsletter. So Mosey over here is popping. We have a small gap for now. Simply waiting. Not interested to take in, you know, I always say to scratch the cookie jar. So now you see how Bruce is choppy over here. Um, the Z lines are lateral. We tried over here to take the fade, but the pre-market support held. We still don't have a reversal because yes, it's weak. So I don't have a favor, uh, favorite uh, scenario that I would like to trade over here. Uh, uh, ARPO, 90% over here will fade to 180. Pretty, pretty convinced on this. But always I need to have no too much bias because buyer is what a killer okay traders but basically for me is what bruce always says load the fucking boat he always says that i never say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm just kidding today traders i'm just kidding <laughs> i don't see any sellers over here i don't see any buyers over here so 
you have to trade in a very good environment. We are a very small group in a uh, small cap room. So we trade only the patterns, okay? Basically the patterns will make you have money. Mosey is what you have to look right now because they had a good breakout. And look what's doing over here, okay? So they have this uh, breakout, this level over here. So ideally, I wanna see this stock at the 475, okay? Look how beautiful. When I want to focus on, I would say a bigger, um, a bigger picture, uh, I'm looking to a five minutes or even hourly chart question and i'm am i going to train this to trade this no until 475 475 is mosey for me short 475 mosey short okay only that for me and arpo we are short okay you see mosey house popping over here beautiful So let it pop, don't be afraid, let it pop. Don't anticipate, okay? Do not anticipate. Let's see the volume. Yeah, I don't see any kind of news. I always do like this in case I don't find something. nothing that can bounce over here that can bounce i can tell you for sure 400k volume into the golden zone let's see some top into that 450 so at first resistance over here you see it let's see if we want more Mosey 465. Popping over here, so always careful. I'm still watching ARPO, still to holding the position. So we're gonna do one second like this. I'm gonna put this up. Mosey. Let's wait, this goes parabolic, all right? Careful if we find volume over here on uh, ARPO. In that case, I need to stop it. And let's see if we'll have a fake breakout. 199, 150K, okay, need to stop also over here. Let's see for a fake breakout or not. Using that 204 maximum, 205. Not really a huge amount of buyers. More exhaustion over here. So we'll add. Fake breakout. So I add it also on the, my accounts over here. Okay, now drop fake breakout. Okay, so we load it. On my account, I have 196 average. And on this one, we have 196. Mosey is pushing. Let's see, Mosey. Mosey, Mosey, Mosey over here. So 
So Mosey has a lot of volume, 500K. So starting, if we go para, So let's see over here. This is Pada. So shorting the ask. We'll get a total, let's say 5,000. So I'm scaling in very small. Let's see if this holds. Okay, we'll probably halt over here. Okay, halted. So at open, sorry, at open and waiting for uh, Mosey, we are in with 1,000 share. I want to trade 5,000. I'm going to hold and look for a pop, load the boat and fail. Okay. Meanwhile, over here, we wait for them wine. So they gave us a fake breakdown, fake breakout. They trap over here longs and coming down. So Mosey, I don't see any news. It's popping on that cat bounce. Volume is 4 million. Uh, four days ago, we traded a huge amount of volume over here. You see that we traded 60 million breakout. But I'm waiting for a kind of pullback right now. So I'm waiting for that. Uh, 520, 530 to low the boat and unwind. So five minutes halt over here. So when I'm trading extension like this, all right, as you can see the current extension, I'm always having a dollar risk uh, as maximum risk on the trade, okay? So that's uh, a very important uh, thing. I'm looking for a parabolic move and I'm going to scale into this parabolic move, okay? So let's see. Still holding over here ARPO. Doesn't have volume, but they're still holding the VWAP. So maximum risk will be this 204205. Still watching for a fader. Remember, it's day three. If I'm going to have the 204205, I'm going to simply. Um, I'm going to simply stop it. Two zero two. So careful over here. Okay, I need to stop out because they're pushing and they're looking for the breakout, okay? So stopped out over here. In this case, 96, we risked 06. They're still uptrending, day three, didn't work, it's fine. We are looking for at least double of the return, then go one hour stop. Now let's see if this will fade and we can have another setup. When you have traders, the stop loss level, take it. You see over here, the fact is they're practically uh, having spikes, dips, spike dips. 
and the volume is not big as well. Uh, the volume over here is 200K, 300K, and we are looking to trade this below 150, 200K per minute. Okay. Now they spiked it, but I'm still not convinced this will be a long. They're still holding that previous high over here. So if we fade, I'm still looking for a possible short. So let's see, Mosey. Let's focus on this. So Tesla started over here to fade again. We'll check if we have a fader. So almost open, 10 seconds. Let's see if we can pop. So added 529 over here, a little bit more. And we will scale in into the 550, 560 if we go para, okay? So I see sellers over here jumping in. We feel the 12 will go down, but no para, so no reason to add. So they're just trading as a daily breakout, not really news that I see. Let's see if we can have more pot on this. They're pushing 547. Let's see, 550s, 560s. Give me the pot of move a little bit more, extension. Still not the part I want. Uh, Joseph, can you explain para? Yeah, parabolic move. I want to see okay. a parabolic move to load the boat and then getting short uh, on that parabolic move. So basically almost vertical. Volume right now is pretty high, 1.5 million. They're stalling over here. Reason to take more at 564. Breaking of the trend. Now we are risking maximum this level of 590 or 6. And we should have a fail in the 515, 510. Okay, so fail came. Let's see if we can fill more. So I want to see sellers over here, non-buyers. So we can go to that 515, fill a little bit more. And we're looking to cover the bids. And now we can risk simply over here 575. So this was a scaling in into parabolic move, maybe start a little bit early over here, but the entry on this pop with a soaking trend break, uh, pretty good one. So let's see if it works or not. Right now we are break even. So we're having like 20 cent stop, 25 cent stop. 
going to see an unwind and looking for at least uh, 50 cents. So let's see 540. I see a drop below 546. 835. I'm looking also LEDs. So you see it's going to the break even, it's going to the break even. Five fifty five, five fifty five, five fifty five. Five fifty six, five fifty six. Okay, wash over here coming. Five thirty five, better. They're still holding this 535 traders. I want to see a dump from there, right? And I like over here the price action. This is looking like a distribution pattern. So dump possible coming over here. Now we're risking break even, wash. Let's see if we can stay below that wash. Not really. Looking to stop maximum break even, 5.30. Wanna see more, I'm not gonna take like only 10 cents profit over here. Five forty, five forty. sellers in. See sellers in 535, 540. So there's a pretty big amount of fight over here. We can take out just a little bit, pay ourselves 535, 533. So we paid, let's say, commission borrows. Always be ready, see my finger over here, ready on flatten. Okay, 1,000, covering to the bid again. So always look to cover those bids. So we got that part of move short. Now risk is break even. Was expecting more unwind over here. They held the 90 May and popped back up again. ARPO is simply untradable. Okay, out over here, the rest. ARPO trader is simply untradable. Uh, lateral over here. AMC is rejecting VWAP and J lines. Tesla, nothing for now. Let's see. Some big sellers over here, the 545, 540. So we can have more unwind over here. Coming possible more unwind. Uh, Sven was asking about the uh, at 535 there that uh, red line of liquidity, um, mm -hmm. and uh, saying that are uh, asking why you weren't so concerned about that. Because uh, I didn't say I was not concerned. I know that we have a 90 MA over here and we have support at 535, but I'm staying with my price on 545, uh, 546 average. So I know that on the feel of this. If we reclaim, I need to cover partial and then put the stop break even. Now you see they're holding over here, making a small flag. I believe this will be 
the moment where we'll see a huge amount of volume. If we break at 545, 550, we'll spy back to the highs. If we'll break 530, 525, we'll drop down to 480. So let's see, 525 breaks, we're gonna go 480, okay? Yep, thank you. And uh, so Hale is asking about your settings there on the heat map. Uh, yes, I still have to modify them traders over here. Nothing is default. Okay, so we'll cover after. Uh, let's look for the price action over here. You see that 525 still holding this support traders and still holding this micro support over here on the chart. I believe they're going to break down heavy. Very smashed over here. I like the tape. I mean, this is a pretty good breakdown coming and a big wash and halt maybe to the downside. 525 is soaking. When I say soaking, it means that they're holding that price. You see, they're holding, they're holding, holding. Break, break, break. Let's see. Everything makes look this is a break. Okay, downtrend pattern, uh, very tight level over here. I see some greens trying to push it, so always careful. But for now, I'm still like short bias. Five thirty four rejecting, five thirty five rejecting. Five thirty six, careful, they're holding support. Five thirty five, five thirty six, they're still propping on that support. And they had again the five forty. Let's look from here. Okay, rejecting over here five forty, five thirty five. Careful, sellers in. They look for a wash, five twenty five possible unwind. Go. Possibly. And again, 525 held. Possibly I'm looking over here for this VWAP at five and then for 450, let's see. But we have a huge buyer over here at 525 traders. You see that soaker at this level over here. Somebody really big absorbing the shares. So if you see some big seller, but this is still not dumping. Okay, we can see better over here. We have somebody over here buying, buying, buying 525. Still at that 525, very smash over there, 525. We continue to make lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and lower lows. Five twenty six. We're selling five twenty six. Five twenty four. Let's see. And again, five twenty five. We had that buyer. You see traders. This support over here that you can see on the chart. So Mosey right now traded 50 million volume. Look over here versus a few days ago. We had the breakout, big push. We have seller stack at 550, 560, 570, 540, 545 over here. So for now, waiting. Is, there's no A plus setup besides that par move that we had. 
okay this is a daily breakout we have probably a lot of pump rooms that are looking this to bring it at six for now you simply need to wait okay unless some big stuff i'm not going to trade this and it happens always 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 uh, can you maybe for I, I, you go through it uh, on our Wednesday uh, webinars uh, every time, uh, Joseph? Yeah, but uh, uh, explain the the big stuff that uh, in what that condition is like or what you're looking for. Okay, so let's uh, let's see if we had an example this morning over here. Mm. Or you you can maybe explain it off yeah, of the chart. But... I, will, I will do I will do just this. So maybe. The traders can understand a little bit better. So let's say we have a stock that is grinding, okay, and we form a resistance. And then we have a huge amount of volume, and everybody is looking for the breakout. But up here, you have basically some big hand that is looking to uh, trap over here long traders. So when they have a breakout, he's ready over here to dump more share than what I have. And this dumps in something like this. So that's a fake breakout and a stuff. So often on these small float companies, you have this type of pattern. Okay. That's the reason why if you trade breakouts in small caps, they will they will really kill you, buddy. They will really kill you. Don't trade breakouts on uh, uh on small caps, trade a dips over here. This breakout went good but the majority they won't really work so you have to trade for example j lines curl uh, on the overs trying to lower your risk so i'm still watching over here the tape with you traders I think this is an interesting tape that we have today. They're simply holding this 90 May. In the five minutes, we are pretty extended. We are rejecting this level 550, 555. We have this micro support 525, 520. On the fail, we're gonna get to five over here, okay? I think we can watch this price section and look to do some uh, tape reading over here till the end. It's a pretty interesting uh, uh, setup. So unless I have the uh, microphone static is back. Sorry, buddy. The uh, microphone static is a little bit um, coming back in. Okay, if, uh, right maybe now. The, the... Let's see over yeah. here if I can mm -hmm. fix it. Is it better? No. Hmm. Now? A little bit better. Uh, maybe yeah, this funny. is the problem. One second. Okay, let's try now, Bruce. Yeah, sounds pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, I'm ready over here to see a possible or stop. I was saying 560 too short or 580 too short. And I will short only in those fake breakouts or I'm looking for a breakdown of this uh, level 520. Okay, so let's see 520 over here, curling down. Yes, in the meantime, J line rejection over here. AMC uh, J line rejection. Okay, they put some more resistance over here. You see traders at 555. Careful because sometimes it can be just a spoof. Okay, just do that. Uh, and it's not a real order. Personally, personally, I still look for the stock to wash over here. We have too many bag holders from uh, previous week that they want, so previous days that they want to take profit on this. But also we have soakers the 525. So unless I have my setup, I'm not trading this. I'm only looking for those stuffs. And in all these extension plays, I've been trading the stuffs and they work extremely well. Uh, Joseph, I'm curious on um, some of the la uh, large caps that you trade. Um, do you see a lot more back and forth and maybe your profit taking is kind of, uh, um, I know it depends on the day, of course, and news or whatever it might be, but mm -hmm. um, maybe there's more kind of, um, uh, you know, a, a back and forth, a reversal back to the mean, that that type of uh, uh, activity in your large caps, and perhaps you are uh, managing Sorry, it a little closer. Bruce, let's look one second, just this break on, please. Just one second, please. Sure, sure. So beautiful breakdown over here, traders. Well done. So yeah, it came exactly to that VWAP and now probably is gonna go to the J lines over here. So sorry, Bruce, for interrupting you, but this is a pretty good level to, to watch. So we've seen a curl down now, $5 number, reason to go over here to that 490, 495. Let's see if now we'll, fake the breakdown and pop back up. So pretty good move over here. Four ninety eight, four ninety five. Okay, they're holding the five dollar level over here. Careful. At this point, you only have to look. Do we have more sellers or do we have more buyers? And this we can filter right now to I would say 499, only to see the, the bigger trades. Okay, Bruce, back to big caps. You are asking for the reversals. The, um, maybe the you find the big the large caps uh, you know more kind of uh, uh, rotational compared to mm. uh, small yeah. caps. Therefore, maybe yes. are you taking profits or managing them a little bit closer? Uh, okay, depends from the pattern that I trade. If, for example, I'm trading Tesla, I know that uh, once it established uh, a trend, like for example, we had. On this day over here, once established this trend, I'm gonna only look to recycle and only looking for the previous day support to take profits 
or if it starts to make, for example, higher lows, higher highs. For example, over here we have a high, we have a lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, and once we start breaking this uh, higher high, I'm gonna take partial of the profit. And uh, well, when I'm trading instead the uh, under over, I know that uh, the pre-market high often will act as resistance. So I'm careful and I can take profit even earlier. But generally, I don't take profits on A plus setup unless two R, uh, two, R two and a half R. Okay, okay thank you. You're welcome. So $5 level traders. So in case of a reclaim of the VWAP, careful on the volume. If we reject, that could be a good spot for a, a, an end. Uh, look, ARPO traders. Still pushing. And the volume is not big at all, so I will be still I will still be watching for ARPO today for a fader. So waiting, J lines fail. So this level of here J lines and rejection to short it. Okay, beautiful over here. Mosey going to the J lines. Or 90, some uh, absorption over here on uh, Mosey. Always look the previous move. Remember, we have this support over here, okay? This support over here. So that support, previous resistance, is now holding the price careful on this traders all right so that's why levels on your chart must be always traced so still holding the five At this point, I'm far from the VWAP, I'm far from the J-Lines. I cannot consider a long over here. As I said, today we had uh, one stop on ARPO, uh, looking to play day three, 10 cent stop. And Mosey uh, worked good on the parabolic move. Now, mid-range. So far from a short, far from a long. Okay, rejecting over here the five while ARPO is curling back up. looks over here traded like a bear flag so in this case when i say bear flag 
start watching for a possible break on this level 495. I'm not going to enter over here mid range. Let's see if we can break the support. Any question, Bruce? Uh, let's see. Some some questions that we didn't get to previously um, regarding the uh, bubble size to determine support levels. Uh, do you use them, or yeah, I mean, you're you're using the heat map, of course, but. Um, um, that's I don't really use the bubble size over here. Not really, for me, it's not really that important. I know that if I have a bigger bubble, that's a big amount of volume traded, and that's more than fine for me. I just need to see the support and resistances. And for the larger, uh, for the large caps, do you use the same uh, heat map um, cutoff? Uh, good question. So let's take a big cap, for example, uh, Facebook. And I will always filter, you can see over here that my chart is pretty clear. So I'm going to put in static configuration heat map for Facebook 400. And also dot times and sales, I will filter 1999. Apple over here, I will filter. You see how pretty clear this is. I'm gonna filter 5,000 for Apple. And my times and sales, I found best for me is 999. If it's a day where Apple is very liquid, put 1999. If it's not that liquid, put 9.99 and Tesla we saw before so I'm using 1000 over here as a heat map size and for uh, filtering times and seals 19.99 so I don't want to see all those levels all those lines those lines just makes me uh, just give me a lot of confusion I want to keep it simple like this I know where's the main support, where's the main resistances, and that's that's what I what I need. That that's all you need. Basically, you can add more features, but I like to keep it very simple. And that's about it for the questions. I'm sorry, no, a few more just coming in. Uh, Zane, uh, regarding uh, uh, pulling money out on big caps uh, on options, um, uh, Joseph has uh, material on that uh, that you shared with us um, in the Discord chat room, etc. It's a little more complex, uh, maybe for this webinar at this moment. Yes, yes, I can repost. Uh, I think we put in pin messages, Bruce. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. In uh, I, I forget it, which uh, uh, which room the stocks room. Sorry, buddy. I forget which room it was in the stocks room or maybe the general. Yeah, I don't see in the stock rooms. I will re-upload it uh, right now. Let me see uh, to find it. So it's the okay. Just uh, put it up soon. Let me find it. It was rules on options, option rules over here. Okay. Yeah, just upload it now. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
uh, Sybil, so those the numbers besides the um, bubbles is the strength indicator in Bookmap for Global Plus subscribers. Uh, it's showing you uh, orders that are hidden, um, uh, like icebergs. Uh, however, uh, just note that um, you know there's some false positives on that. Okay, that also answers um, uh, so Hale's question there. Yeah, you should see it under um, the studies configuration, so Hale. So this is actually a stuff uh, member before asked. You mm -hmm. see yeah. that they went for the break of this level, right? So this is a breakout. And once we have over here buyers, so long players, uh, going to break this for the high and rejecting, boom, they fade it. So uh, I was saying just now to a few of my members over here, um, um, not really uh, a day where we had a lot of setups. The only setup we had Mosey Parabolic and ARPO not working. So closing red on three brokers, but basically almost flat day for me, like small losses. Um, I will be waiting today, Mosey, uh, if we will have an afternoon or a midday curl from the Zealands over here for a possible long. Tesla still not looking to trade it because we have a no trend over here. It's basically lateral. I was waiting this morning for this break for this breakdown. Instead, we're holding this support created like months ago over here in March. And you see, we, we just dip over here traders and we're bouncing. Apple, again, is not uh, following the plan because I was looking for an open and flush over here. We didn't have anything. No, si no setup is lateral. And how can you determine if a, uh, a stock is lateral? The one minute, the three minutes, the five minutes, Zaylands are all lined up together, intertwined. So until this stock breaks 122 and 80 and we start having Zaylan rejection, I'm not going to trade this. So red day for me, but it's part of the game. Um, kept losses very small, but for example, uh, it didn't work. So you have to accept when you have losses. Facebook is not trending. You see it's bouncing over here with very low volume. This is a channel. If the market will start dumping strong, Apple, Tesla will go down. Yes, will drive the market down. Look for the break on over here, 306. ARPO, where I had basically my loss because all the rest was uh, a break even, a scratch. ARPO over here was looking to trade short and I think still can be a very good afternoon setup. So I'm not done with this stock over here this morning. Um, we had this resistance up to the open. We dipped into the 200 million, the five. We popped. So I had a 196. Um, on average my accounts and stop it between 204 and 205 until until really this is the plan I will follow I won't see and look with me the one minute J line so this gray uh, J lines over here the 7289 shifting below this purple one over here the five minute J lines and having pops I'm not going to touch it okay so uh, didn't trade these pops over here. Didn't trade these pops over here. I didn't like this price action. Uh, kept it small, but red on ARPO for the day. Mosey, I didn't take all the fade. I took only the parabolic move over here. So you can see, I believe, better in a look this chart over here. Okay, I never used them, but I think will be. Good for you to see something like this. Okay, you see how the trade over here, why parabolic? Because this is how it goes parabolic, vertical, whatever. Boom. It's like when BTC, USD, Bitcoin went parabolic when it went like, you know, that big, huge move. You see over here went parabolic, 
and then start fading. Okay, now we have the support of J lines. The volume, it's very important always to analyze the volume, is fading as well. So we'll see if we have volume over here, the J lines, and for another push or in one. For now, there's no volume. Okay, uh, so this was uh, was the win, but not huge amount of uh, size, not huge amount of return. I would say more uh, small count scalp. Uh, the other one I was looking this morning was AMC. Uh, let me put it back up again over here. So my plan was to short, and the plan worked pretty good. Uh, short when the one minute is below the five minute J line. This is my uh, overextended or gap down play. I said AMC look for a short, and the point is I didn't take the trade, so I missed it. Okay, anytime you miss a trade, don't. Uh, be too harsh with yourself will happen when you have losses will happen always keep the daily risk uh, fixed set with your broker so that really can save your day uh, but the setups over here are the pop and fill the J lines now the pop over here the J lines this I called before remember said J line rejection on AMC and simply as unwinding from there so this has a huge potential AMC to unwind because we are in an overextended stock, okay. I believe this was the fifth day, and you can see the the first day, second day, third day. Then yesterday we had a fail, and you see that we passed below this uh, black line over here. We start rejecting, and then this morning gap down, pop and fill. We're falling, so now we have some support into the 1250 area. If we break that, consider the next target this 1150. Okay, so we have supports over here, resistance over here, and then we can have the 1060s over here. So how I calculate my main targets are is this way. All right, uh, Bruce, any other questions? Uh, no, no, I think uh, you've answered them all. Uh, you've been going for uh, two hours and uh, uh, and 15 minutes, so. Uh, uh, Senior morning morning routine here uh, with the uh, with the large caps uh, very different than uh, than the small caps. Um, yeah. So um, uh, yeah, kind of interesting to see that. And uh, because uh, you, usually during the, uh, the the live webinars on Wednesdays, it's the small caps uh, that you're uh, you're trading and, and very very aggressive uh, with them and um, have your specific setups for them. Uh, kind of a mild uh, day today. Um, yeah. But, um, um, uh, Joseph, uh, if, if you could do me a favor, um, uh, could you, um, I, I can put the link into the chat for tomorrow's uh, webinar. I just want to mention something to, to people um, uh, and then uh, maybe click on this link there uh, in the chat. Um, it's, um, uh, and then show people here. It, it's, uh, I mean, I, I just don't want to change the, the screen here, that's all. Um, and uh, if if people are interested in coming to tomorrow, you need to um, re-register here. There's a drop down there. Click on that drop down, and then you'll select the one for uh, Thursday. Yeah, and then register for that. And that'll be with Scott Pulsini at 10 a.m. tomorrow, uh, and you know for only an hour. Uh, and uh, it's um, a futures trader. All right. Just uh, sorry for the confusion on that. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank thank you, Joseph, for showing that. No problem. We still love you, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, uh, uh, thank you so much, Joseph. Uh, this has been very very helpful. We'll um, we'll put this up on our YouTube channel, uh, everybody. Uh, you'll see it in the um, selected webinars uh, uh, playlist, uh, and um, the link uh, to it is um, uh, bookmap.com/slash/youtube. Uh, I've put all of Joseph's contact information in the chat box for you. So if you're interested uh, in uh, his education or if you have questions, you've got his email, you've got his website, you've got all the information there. All right. So, uh, no, I think I think that's it, Joseph. Okay. So thank you very much, traders, for being here today. Um, small red day, but at least we analyzed the tape together. I think that was very, like, uh, Say a good example for you today, especially in Mosey. Uh, always respect your stop losses. Always, if you need help, reach out. Okay. So thank you very much, traders, and see you next time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Bye bye. Bye bye.